Hello, my name is Ryan from Buster Beagle 3D, and today I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial on using the Pinpoint Positioning System on the Xtool S1. It allows for precise positioning of workpieces in Xtool Creative Space in a variety of shapes and methods, and in my opinion, is even more accurate than a camera positioning system. I wanted to thank Xtool for sponsoring today's video. I also wanted to point out that this is the first video on my channel sponsored by Xtool, so any reviews you have seen in the past on this channel were not. They just really liked the tutorial that I had made on Creative Space in the past, also not sponsored, and asked me if I would be willing to do a video on the pinpoint positioning system that was updated after my last Creative Space tutorial, so I agreed, and with that out of the way, let's get started. I also wanted to point out that you will be seeing me working in the new 2.0 beta version of Xtool Creative Space, so it may look slightly different than what you would be seeing if you're using the last version of the software. However, the functionality of the pinpoint positioning system should still be the same. So the first thing that we want to do when we're trying to set up this system is you always want to make sure that you set up your distance to be correct. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. So I'm going to move the workpiece underneath the laser positioning, and I'm going to press this button, which will auto measure the height. So it's going to auto measure the height, and then it's going to reset the height system, and then it's going to go back to the location where it was. So if you remember from my last tutorial on Creative Space, we still had the, the same start marking system here on the side. And I also wanted to point out that if you, if you have a piece of art selected, you're not going to see it. So you want to make sure that you're selecting off of any art so that you get this processing menu to show up. So I'm going to click on Start Marking. And then here it shows us all the different options that we can use when we're trying to get the positioning to work on the machine. Now, before we did have the rectangle one, but we now have circle, polygon, and line. And rectangle really works the same way that it used to. And to be honest, I'm going to kind of recommend that you don't use this rectangle version. It is the simplest and, and it is what was on the old system. And I'll explain that in a little bit, but I, I'll at least show you again very briefly how it works. So you can click on Rectangle, and then I'm going to click Start Marking. And then up here in the Marking mode, you can change to any of the others while you're in this system. But for right now, I'm just going to keep the Rectangle. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to move the, the laser pointer to the top left corner of the piece of wood that I'm working with. And actually one more thing I wanted to show you guys before I do that is what you're, you're gonna do is you're gonna move the pointer to this top corner, you're gonna press the button on the front of the machine, and then you're gonna move it to the bottom corner of the piece of wood or whatever it is you're engraving on, and you're gonna press that button again. Now. The default for that button is it's going to make a noise, and, and just for me, it's kind of a loud noise, so I don't want to hear that. So in the new system, we come up here where we select our, our machine, and then I'm going to come over here to Device Settings. And then if I come over to Working Info, you can turn off those buzzer reminders. So if you don't want to hear that beep every time you press the button, you can come here and disable that. On the older version of Creative Space, there was, a, there was a little cog that would be up here next to the picture of the image where you can get into those device settings to turn that off. Okay, so I'm going to go back into Start Marking. I'm going to click Rectangle, hit Start Marking, and then I am going to move it so that the laser crosshair is at the top left corner, and I'm going to press the button and you'll see that a dot has shown up on my screen. And then I'm going to go all the way to the bottom right, and I am going to press the button again. And you'll see that it has now created a rectangle on my screen. And then at this point, I can click End Marking. And you'll see that it, it has added it up here to this processing area. 
And the reason it's creating this little icon over here is at this point, if I wanted to, I could go in and add another thing inside of there. I could add another rectangle, a circle polygon, any of these other uh, options. I could go in and add as many as I want, which I'll talk about in a little bit. For, but for right now, let's just focus on this rectangle. So I'll hit done. And then in here, you can see that I have a, uh, a rectangle that should correspond to exactly where that piece of wood is. So now if I wanted to bring in some artwork, this is a dragon that I got off of the Xtool projects page. So I know that my piece of wood is only gonna encompass where this square is. So I'm gonna make it smaller. Anything outside of this area will still engrave. So if you want to limit it to just what is inside this area, especially for a larger image, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create another rectangle. And then I'm going to kind of create a little margin around the image. And then I'm going to select both of these, right click and create a mask, click on done. And so now only the things that are inside of this position that I have made using the system will, will burn. So now I can just process this and run it in the machine. Now, the reason I say that I wouldn't recommend doing this particular process is that when the item is just in there by itself and you're just picking these two points, you're still not 100% sure that your work piece is exactly square. That's kind of why I like using that absolute coordinate system where I know that I can easily set up my work pieces to make sure that they're square to the machine. And so even if you want to do something simple like this, I still would recommend using the polygon instead of the rectangle. Now, if I wanted to go back into what I've already done, I can click on this little eye icon over here and, and it'll open up the same system that I was already working with. However, I can also click on this trash can and it will delete it. Or if I just clicked on start marking again, it'll get rid of this and start over. But for right now, I'm just going to keep this rectangle in there. And what I want to do is I want to go back in here. And I, for now, I just want to kind of show the polygonal version of the pinpoint system. And I'm kind of skipping over circle for just a second. Um, but I, I wanted to show once you go to the polygonal and you see here, you can put as many points as you want to outline an object. And you also want to make sure that you're kind of following the same pattern that they're showing here. So, you know, let's say I started at this top point, then I would go, you know, to the right and then down. So do it in a circle. You don't want to just uh, haphazardly pick points uh, because that it, it, it might not give you a, a full shape. So what I want to do here is I'm going to do the same thing that I ran before, but this time... I'm going to be picking all four corners. So I'm going to select the first corner and then I'm going to select the top right corner and then the bottom right corner and then finally the bottom left corner. Now, if I clicked on end marking now, you'll see that I have two. This, the second one is the one that was done with the polygon and the first one was done with just the rectangle. And if I hit done, what I kind of wanted to show here is you can see that the positioning was not exactly square. So one of these is that very straight rectangle and the other one was where I was picking the actual four corners of that piece of wood and you can see that I, I wasn't exactly placing the wood in the machine exactly square 
So that's why, again, I would still recommend, even if you're doing a simple, a simple piece of wood, I would recommend using the polygon instead of the rectangle, just so that you can be 100% sure exactly how your piece is sitting in your machine. Okay, so if I wanted to remove these, again, I can click on the trash can. Okay, so the next one I wanted to show is the circle. I'm going to click on circle. And again, it's pretty self-explanatory, but what I'm going to do here is I am going to place a circle in the machine. And then you're going to want to pick just three points on that circle. And they, they don't have to be in exact positions where these points are showing. You just want to pick basically three points that are essentially a triangle away from each other. So I'm going to click on the first one. And then I'm going to move the position over kind of to the bottom on one side. And then kind of on the bottom on the other side. And there you go. And so now when I click end marking and done, I now have a perfect circle that goes around the round object that I'm measuring in my, in my machine. I also wanted to point out that if you are changing the object, you always want to do the distance first. Like you want to make sure that your height is, is correct before you do any of these point marking systems to figure out where your, where your objects are. So now I'm going to run this Marvel calendar inside of there. And again, I can just move it exactly where it's supposed to be. I like to leave a little bit of a border. And now I can run this job and I know that it's going to fit exactly where I have that in the machine. So now I'm going to go back to this polygon because there's some even cooler things that you can do with this particular positioning system. And it's not just, you know, oddly shaped objects or like I said, I, I prefer it to doing just a regular rectangle. But one of the really cool things that you can do with this is you can set up multiple shapes inside of inside of the machine. So let's say I have this heart frame. Well, one of the cool things that you can do here is you can set up the outside of the frame as one job, and then you can also set up the heart itself as another one. So what you want to do is I'm going to first set up the overall frame. So I'm just going to go to the all four corners of the frame. Again, I'm pressing the button on the front of the machine to pick all of these points. And then uh, I'm going to hit end marking because I want that to be one shape. But now you can go in and create another shape. So what I did here was I am going to outline the, the heart itself on the inside. So I'm pressing the button again, and you'll see that it's starting to record all of the positions around that heart. Okay, so after I set that up, I just hit end marking again. And so now I have both the outside of that object and the inside, which is tracing around that heart. And so now 
not only do I know the extent of the outside of that, I also know, you know, depending on how many points you put in there, exactly where that heart lies inside of this piece. And one really kind of cool thing that you can do here is you can take a screenshot of this and then the artwork that I'm going to end up putting around this, you know, wasn't exactly set up to this, this same shaped heart, but because now I know exactly the shape that I need to engrave around, I can use this as a template for altering the art that I want to put around it. So, so I'm going to import the heart that I generated based on this design already. So then I can put this inside of here. And because I was able to trace around and know exactly where all of the geometry of this frame lies, I can put this artwork inside of here and it already corresponds perfectly to the heart that I have on the inside. And I have to say, this is something that if you were, you know, I bought this frame at the dollar store. That is not something, even with a camera, that is easy to do, to be able to place artwork and objects inside of a pre-existing uh, piece of art and know that your engraving is going to work exactly where you want it to go. Because, you know, even with the camera system, there's always like a slight deviation based on the way that it warps the camera or that, you know, the the angle of, at, at which it takes it. You know, it could be a couple, you know, millimeter or two off. Well, sometimes that's too far off. And with a system like this, I know exactly where this is going to go. And I have to say that this piece turned out really, really, really nice because I knew exactly where things were going to go. And especially for pieces where, let's say, you only have one, you don't have a lot of time to, to make mistakes. Uh, a system like this is, is really, really useful and beneficial. And so the last system that we have here is this line system. So if we click on line and this one is really useful for really kind of pinpointing exactly where you want to have text or, or other artwork for very small objects. I ended up using it on these pencils. So I was able to take these lines, place the pencils in the work area. Now, if you had a, some sort of jig where you could put all these, you know, you could probably do something very similar where you have the same file set up all the time, but maybe you don't want to do a jig. You just want to do a couple different items. This works out really, really well. So again, you have to place each one of these lines individually. And then I put artwork, which was just Buster Beagle 3D. And then I engrave those directly onto these pencils using these lines as reference points to where I have them in my machine. Now, you might have seen other videos where people engraved on grains of rice and things like that. That's how they would be able to really pinpoint exactly where these pieces are because they're using this line system to really know where those positions are. Okay. So the last thing that I, that I kind of wanted to point out again, and I, I kind of alluded to it before a little bit, and that is the fact that you can use multiple processes here at the same time. I, I have some of these objects here. And one of the things that I just wanted to point out is this might not be the setup that you want to do. And the reason for that is just that all of these items are different heights. So if you're going to be running batch processes of multiple things, you want to make sure that they're at least the same height so you're not running into any issues. But for this demonstration, I'm just kind of throwing them in there just to kind of show you what they can do. So, you know, we could start with this polygon tool and we can set out our points for it. And then... I'm going to hit done and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to do the circle at the same time. And so that is going to be where I'm going to put that coaster. And then on the other side, I'm going to do a pencil as well. And then that pencil would be using this line positioning tool. And, and so you can have multiple things set up at the same time and, and still know where all of the pieces are and and then run those processes all at the same time so 
you know, I can set up the coaster, I can set up this dragon, and I can set up the pencil. Again, this particular instance probably wouldn't work great just because of the different height of that pencil, but but it's just really for show of what what you could do. So that's really all I wanted to show about this particular process and the and the point positioning system. Again, you're looking at the uh, beta version of 2.0 Xtool Creative Space. So there's a, a lot of other stuff in here to kind of unravel and unpack. But for right now, I just wanted to focus on that that one kind of thing. Thank you very much for watching and thank you Xtool for sponsoring this video. If you like this video, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content having to do with laser engravers, 3D printers, injection molding, and all things Maker. I'm sure there is much more to unravel with this new beta version of the software, so I'm sure I'll be going into some of that soon, so stay tuned for that. Uh, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.